go. Right, question eight. Um, the vectors question. Oh, we need to show that. We're given these, these uh, points, and we're told that we've got a uh, quadrilateral ABCD. Show that AB equals AD. Now, the first thing to note here is that this isn't saying that the vector A to B is the same as the vector A to D. Because if it did, they'd put little arrows over it. This is saying that the length of the line AB is the same as the length of the line AD. That's the first thing you've got to, you've got to get. So if this is to do with lengths, we need to find these vectors first. The vector from A to B. Remember with vectors, to get from the point A to the point B, in vector notation, what we think of is we go from the point A to the origin, and then from the origin to the point B. So we need to go backwards from A to the origin, and then we need to go from the origin to the point B. So the, the vector AB, that, what's that going to be? 2, 2, and minus 4. And the vector AD, again, we're going to go from A to the origin. And then we're going to go from the origin to the point D, which is 1, 6, 3. And this time, this gives us minus 2, 4, and 2. And we, hopefully we've already spotted, although these two vectors aren't the same, they all, you know, both of them have components of 2, 2, and 4 in there. So when we come to work out our lengths, which we actually have to show that we're doing, the magnitude of that one and the magnitude of the other one, we need to calculate both of those things to actually get our mark. And they, I think they came to 2 root 6, did they? You actually work those out. So we need to show that they give us the same amount there. Part two, find a vector equation of the line through A and the midpoint of BD. Okay. Now, now actually, you've probably got enough to try and come up with some kind of diagram. I, I just did this very much by thinking, well, if we're going to find, actually, if we're going to find the midpoint, this is going back. There's a couple of ways you could do this, but this is going back to again core two, core one even. And the midpoint between two points in coordinates, just because we're in three dimensions doesn't make any difference with this. The, the points B and D were, well, B is 5, 4, minus 3, and D was the point 1, 6, 3, wasn't it? And so the midpoint, do you remember from core 1, you add together the, the components and divide by 2? Is the average of those those values. So the midpoint, did we call the midpoint anything? Um, the midpoint would be 5 plus 1 over 2, that gives us 3. 4 plus 6 divided by 2, that gives us 5. And minus 3 plus 3 divided by 2, that gives us 0. So that's our midpoint. That's it. Well, no, hang on. That's, we've, that's the midpoint of BD, we need to find a vector equation of the line through A and the midpoint of BD. So, so this, this vector equation has got to go through A and that point. So we need to know for our direction, we need to know the direction vector from A to this midpoint that we just established. Well, we've just been doing loads of things with direction vectors, that is minus we're going to go from A to the origin, so minus 3, 2, 1, plus the origin to this midpoint, so plus 3, 5, 0, and that gives us a direction vector of 0, 3, minus 1. So we've now got the point that this point that goes through, <coughs> 3, 2, 1 as well, and we've got the direction of our line. So the equation of the line, which we have to write as r equals, we can choose a point that the line goes through. 
we know two, we know three, two, one, and three, five, zero. It doesn't matter which one we choose. Plus some um, value, some parameter times the direction of the line, which is zero, three, minus one. And that would be the equation of our line. This bit for finding the midpoint, there are a number of different ways to do it. Actually, the first time I, I looked at this question generally, I, I did it a different way again. I treated this as being a found the direction vector from B to D. I halved it, and then I added it on to the vector B. And that took me to that point. So that, that wasn't a particularly sensible way of doing it. That's a much more efficient way of getting it. Part 3. Show that C lies on the line found in part 2. Well, well, this is just about... This is only one mark. Show that the point 317.4 lies on that line. Show that, show that that's true. All we need to do now is to find a value of lambda that satisfies all three of those components. So I, I just checked them. If we look at the i component, 3 equals 3, well that's fine. J component, 17 is 2 plus 3 lambda. That gives us, uh, what does it give us? 3 lambda is 15, so lambda is 5. And look at the k component, 4 is 1 minus lambda. That also gives us that lambda is, have I written that wrong? It's a minus four. Sorry, I've written down the coordinates wrong. That's a minus four. There we go. <laughs> that also gives us lambda equals five, which shows that that point is on the line. That's right, it's 317 minus four. Yes, 317 minus four, there it is. And finally, <clears throat> what shape is it? <laughs> Well, let's think a little bit about what we had. We had, we had the point A, and then the two <coughs> lines that came from the point A were the same length. That was the first thing. We had two lines from A <coughs> that were the same length, going to the other two points, which were B and D. We had the midpoint of BD. which is there. We have the line that goes between A and the midpoint also goes through the point C. And once we've <coughs> all that up, I think we've got a kite. So that's, you really think it looks more like that? Oh, my diagram looks worse. Right, so yeah. That's no <laughs> Oh, it also apparently looked like a rhombus in a number of cases. <laughs> Jack said diamond. Great Jack show. said diamond. Yeah. Shall we stop the video? Because now we're just arguing about what shapes are. So, uh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>